Hey guys, welcome to the channel. With the holidays creeping up, it's the right time to step up your holiday game. In this tutorial series, we'll go over step by step on setting up a Falcon Pi player. Now, what exactly is a Falcon Pi player? While I go over the introduction, let me throw out a video of me installing a protected case on the Raspberry Pi because I feel it's more of a fun video while you enjoy the introduction. By the way, feel free to skip the introduction if you feel the need to do so. First steps, let's talk about what exactly is a Falcon Pi player. It's basically a highly customizable media player. In this tutorial series, we'll be using the Falcon Pi player to play videos on your projector. Standalone media players take up less time, effort and money to set up. So therefore they are the easiest to work with. And if that's the primary intent, then you should absolutely go for it. There's no real need to go for a Falcon Pi player. With Falcon Pi Player, you do get a few benefits though. It's extremely customizable in terms of both hardware as well as software. For example, when it comes to hardware, not only can it play videos, but it can also control other stuff like lights, fans, motors, smoke machine, and whatnot. And you can also sync this with other Falcon Pi players. So in case you wanna run a show with multiple projectors, this would be the way to go. In terms of software, you can have different schedules to have the shows go on a particular time of day. You can set up different times of day for every day of the week. You can have different shows play. And most importantly, the reason why I use it is because of convenience. Once the player is set up, it's connected to the internet. You don't even have to t touch the physical unit to update your shows, change any settings. You can monitor the status of the exact show that's playing right from the comfort of your home. And that's the primary reason I opt for a Falcon player. Now, if that's something you're interested in, let's get right into it. In this tutorial, we'll cover the following aspects. First, the hardware setup. Next, step-by-step -step software installation needed to configure the hardware to work as a Falcon Pi player. Next, we'll go over the network settings required to control the player efficiently, running basic videos, creating a playlist and also go over advanced playlist techniques so that it's easier to handle future updates. After that, we'll get into slightly more technical stuff where we sync two players so that if your shows contain multiple displays or multiple projectors, you can run your shows in sync regardless of the content. Okay, first up, hardware. Falcon player can be configured with a variety of boards as you can see on the screen here. This list comes directly from the manual, which is again linked in the description. It's safe to say most commonly used boards are Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. Both are perfectly capable of supporting the player. In most cases, the cost difference isn't significant enough, so it's just better to go with the Raspberry 4 since it's better hardware. The one little quirk about the Raspberry Pi 4 is that it uses micro HDMI as opposed to normal HDMI like the Raspberry Pi 3. So if you're planning to use new HDMI cables anyway, it doesn't really matter since the cables cost the same, whether it's a normal or a micro HDMI. A few other things that you'll need in addition to the board itself, it's a case for the Raspberry Pi because you don't want to leave the board standalone. You need a protective case, a compatible power supply, and a micro SD card. I'll have links to all the items in the description below. Now let's assume that you have the hardware ready and you're ready to roll. Let's configure the Raspberry Pi to be a Falcon Pi player. The Falcon player is primarily just a software that runs on this particular board. Configuring involves two main steps. One is erasing and formatting the memory card and the second step is flashing the memory card with the Falcon player software. So let's get started. First and foremost, we're gonna download the software required to clear up the memory card. The link is down there. It's called SD card formatter. Basically, we're gonna to come to this link and download the appropriate software, whether it's Windows or Mac. Just hit your desired selection, scroll through some of the agreements and just hit, hit accept. That's it, your software is downloaded and it'll most likely be a compressed file. Next up, you're gonna download the software required to flash the Falcon Pi software, which is a software called Balina Etcher. So we'll download that as well. And finally, we're gonna download the Falcon Pi player software, which is again on this GitHub link, which I'll link down below. So here you can see there are a bunch of releases. The newest release is listed on top and subsequent releases, you can scroll through them. If any time you can't see the exact files to be downloaded, just expand the assets column and you should be able to see the files. So basically what you're looking for is expand the assets. In this case, since we are using a Raspberry Pi, just download the file that says Pi image. The other one like BBB and stuff is for a different board. 
So keep it simple, just download the one that says Pi image. And once that's downloaded, we'll have our all three files are downloaded, the SD card formatter, the Bellina etcher, and the Pi image. Step one, we might have to unzip the files because I believe some of the softwares come in zipped. Next, we'll install the SD card formatter. The installation is pretty straightforward. Just hit next a bunch of times and you should be good. Open the SD card formatter. Make sure to have your SD card inserted in your laptop. Memory is a big clue to identify and ensure that you are formatting the right card. In this case, you can see it's 29 GB. I have a 32 gig card, so sounds about right. Just make sure you're erasing the right card. And there's a drop down box to make a selection if required. So that's it. Just hit format. A quick format should work just fine. And that should be done. That's it. Step one is completed. The next step what we have is actually installing the Falcon Pi software. So first off for that we need to open the Bellina Etcher software. As you can see a three step process. Select the exact file. So in this case it will be the Pi image that we downloaded which was a third file. Select target and then flash. That's it. In a few seconds your flashing should start. It took me about like a minute or so to get flashing done so don't panic in case it takes a while. Once that's done just remove your memory card and insert it into the Raspberry Pi and power the board up. You should be good. I'll give you an overview of my setup. So I've inserted the newly flashed memory card in here and I'm going to turn the board on. So like I said in this case I'm just going to hook it up to a computer monitor because it's way easier for tutorial purposes than a projector. That's our power up process. It took about 15 to 30 seconds for the screen to show up. The last line has all three ways that you can access the Raspberry Pi. One is the IP address. Next is fpp.local and third one is just fpp. So that's it in terms of hardware. Let's jump on our laptop and configure the Pi. The moment we power up, First and foremost, it has no information about any Wi-Fi networks to connect to. So when that's the case, it'll host its own Wi-Fi sort of like a hotspot on your phone. Okay, now let's get connected. Step one, you have to connect it to the Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi network. Now this is the Wi-Fi network that the Raspberry Pi is hosting. As you saw on the screen, it's hosting itself with an IP address 192.168.8.1 and that's more acting like a hotspot. So now you're connecting to the Raspberry Pi. So step one, you go into your computer's Wi-Fi settings and look for FPP. That would be the default name when you power it on for the first time. In this case, I got connected directly, but in case if it asks you for a password, the password I believe is Christmas. It's listed in the manual and you can change it later. Now that you're connected to the Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi network, you can talk to it directly. So let's pull up the Falcon Pi player controls. For that, refer back to your monitor screen and use one of the three web addresses in your browser. So ideally any of the three methods should work but sometimes you might have to try all three to see which one works for you. So let's go ahead and type in the web address in the browser. So there it is. So this is the initial setup that you'll see on the Falcon Pi player the first time you connect to it as nothing is set up yet. Now to keep things simple, the only two settings you need to worry about here at the very first go is the UI password and the OS password. Just leave it disabled. So the UI password, just disable it and the OS password, just set it to default and finish setup. That's it. And most likely it'll ask you for a reboot. If it does, just go ahead and reboot. Now once the player reboots, you might have to again connect your Wi-Fi network to the FPP network so you can talk to it. So the moment you lose Wi-Fi connection, you can no longer access this FPP page. So be mindful of that. Your laptop settings may automatically switch networks behind the scenes and you would end up wondering why you can't access the Falcon Pi player settings. So be mindful of that. It's happened a bunch of times to me and it'll save you the pain. Now that your Falcon Pi player has booted up, this is the first screen you'll see after the initial setup. So here, it's asking you to expand storage. So basically here what it's asking you to do is expand your file system so that you can use the entire memory space available in the SD card. Again, this is a step that you only have to do once and it's very straightforward. Just hit storage settings and pretty much accept the prompts. Here it says grow file system. That's it. Just click it. That's all you need to do and then reboot the player again and you should be done. 
Now the two other settings I would quickly look at is go to status and control FPP settings under audio video. Here you can check if you want the audio to go via the HDMI or the 3.5 mm jack on the Raspberry Pi. So pick your desired output. In my case it's just the HDMI because I just want all the audio to be directed from the projector. And the other one you want to check is go to the system settings and you have an option for resolution. So in case you need a particular resolution, this is where you can pick. But in my case, for now, I'll leave it as default. That's pretty much it when it comes to basic setup. Now we are ready to play some videos. For that, let's go to content and setup and file manager. Within file manager, select the video option. And here, let me upload one of the shows that I have. I'll use the marshmallow show as an example. As you can see, the video is being uploaded over Wi-Fi. It's fairly quick. Done. Now that the video is uploaded, let's go back to the home screen. You can jump over there using the status and control and first option, or you can click the FPP icon on the top left. It'll get you to the home screen. Let me also show you a live picture of the monitor where we have the Raspberry Pi plugged in. As you can see, the controls are fairly straightforward. You have a drop down box. In this case, I just have one video file. So it will already show you the video file that you can play. Just select it and hit play. And there you go. On the computer screen, you can see the video play in real time. And that's pretty much it. You have the basic controls like skip, next, all of these right here. But we'll worry about that later. But this is it. In terms of extremely basic setup to get your videos going, this is all you need to do. Now, in the next video, we'll go over configuring your Raspberry Pi's network settings so that it's connected to your home network or your show network. All this while, we've been dedicatedly connected to the Raspberry Pi directly, but that's not really ideal. What we want to do is we want all of them to be on the same network so you can connect to the Raspberry Pi anytime you want whenever you're home. So let's learn all that cool stuff in the next video.